So last week, C-SPAN unveiled historians' rankings of all presidents, except for Biden, obviously. And one thing that really stuck out to me, like, there were articles written about, you know, how Obama's in the top ten, or how Trump is among the bottom four, three, four, five worst. Well, one thing that really jumps out at me is this. Yep, right there, Ronald Reagan in the top 10, ranked as the ninth best president of all time. I know that their criteria for who's the best and who's the worst might be somewhat different than mine, but I don't care, I'm still going to strongly object to this. Now, you guys haven't seen these videos, you know, I'm a leftist. I always knew Reagan was bad. I always knew he was overpraised. I didn't realize that he was seriously one of the worst presidents America has ever had. And that's something I learned um, throughout my last semester of college, uh, taking a class on the American presidency and studying nearly every president in American history. And as I learned about the his the Reagan's time in office, I actually became pretty visceral. And I actually could just feel my blood boiling as I sat there and as the professor listed off everything he did in office. And I feel like this video needs to be made. It needs to, the record needs to be set. Ronald Reagan... I can't call him the worst president in American history because we've had some pretty horrendous ones that I do not feel comfortable calling someone the worst. But he's up there and he is definitely the most overrated president because he has left behind a legacy that is disastrous. So, first things first, Reaganomics. These are supply side or trickle down economics that are meant to put money in the private marketplace, and that's supposed to stimulate economic growth and create new jobs. It failed miserably. Yep, according to a study just a few months ago by economists David Hope and Julian Lindbergh, uh, over the last several decades of trickle-down economics, the wealthy's incomes grew while income inequality has skyrocketed. And according to Lindbergh, quote, Based on our research, we would argue that the economic rationale for keeping taxes on the rich low is weak. In fact, if we look back into history, the period with the highest taxes on the rich, the post-war period, was also a period with high economic growth and low unemployment. And the impacts of trickle-down economics are still seen today, with the wealthiest 400 families paying a lower tax rate in 2018 than the middle class, although this can be attributed to the Trump tax cuts. And despite a strong economy on paper under President Trump, most were making under a living wage and the cost of health care, housing, etc. rose as income inequality had hit record highs even before COVID. And over the past several decades, $50 trillion from the bottom 90% has gone to the pockets of the top 1%. But don't worry, we'll get to that later. And then there was beefing up the military budget and increasing military spending. Now, I'm well aware of the irony that this is a guy who says, oh, we need to reduce the size of government and then decides he wants to expand the military budget. But moving on. While supporters of an increased military budget like to claim that it helped to end the Cold War, it almost did the exact opposite. It almost escalated it and turned it into a hot war, a literal war with actual weapons. The, because in response to Reagan increasing the budget, the Soviet government expanded their own military budget because Reagan had been using code speak for nuclear warfare. And as the Soviet ambassador to the U.S. said, quote, the impact of Reagan's hardline policy was the exact opposite of the one intended by Washington. It strengthened those in the pol Polito Politburo, uh, the Central Committee, and the security apparatus who had been pressing for a mirror image of Reagan's own policy. And then there was the invasion of uh, Grenada which was nothing more than an overthrowing of the communist government in the country. On top of this being in violation of international law, it also is just an example of the Red Scare and how its impacts have um, just completely infiltrated American society and how um, it is an example of compromising of your civil liberties. 
and the good old Iran-Contra affair, which I'm sure a lot of history geeks are aware of. But for those that don't, the right, the Contras were a right-wing rebel group in Nicaragua, which, I mean, they did a lot of stuff. They uh, kidnapped, tortured, and raped civilians. They also executed prisoners of war, um, seized civilian property. I mean, that's great. That's that's all amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Reagan funded these, and while his activities weren't exactly illegal, he was definitely misleading the public. He was saying stuff like, oh, this is for humanitarian aid right here, which is why he was basically encouraging the funding of it. Ugh, it's just gross. And the ramping up of the war on drugs. Yep, although it was President Nixon who started the war on drugs, it was really Reagan who escalated it, and he signed bills such as the Anti-Drug Abuse Act, which created mandatory minimum sentencing for drug offenses, which has resulted in life sentences for nonviolent drug offenders, which has been one of the many reasons the U.S. has such a high incarceration rate compared to the rest of the world. And what makes it especially infuriating is the fact that his daughter had a drug problem, but instead of locking her, locking her up and throwing away the key like Reagan did for a lot of these innocent people who are just... And what is especially infuriating about this is how Reagan's daughter had a drug problem, and... If he was consistent, he would have either locked her up and thrown away the key, or he would have treated everybody who had a drug problem with how he, his family treated her. Instead, he treated them horrendously and ruined their lives forever, and we're still seeing the effects of it today. Even as we are seeing states legalize marijuana and getting the ball rolling on decriminalization of other drugs, the effects will be permanent. Oh, and I also forgot to mention how, um, as president, he defunded community mental health centers, and as governor of California, uh, abolished involuntary hospitalization of people who were mentally ill. Uh, this resulted in many um, people with mental health issues not being able to get the help they deserved and the help that they needed. And this helped contribute to a mass homeless population since one third of homeless people have some sort of mental illness. So yeah, it's, uh, some pretty messed up stuff. And you know, there are other things I could get into. You know, there's like the typical um, backwards social policies of Reagan, like being anti-abortion rights and being pro-prayer uh, in school. But that's fairly benign compared to some of the other stuff I mentioned, the other atrocities that he committed while in office. The thing that cements him, though, as one of the worst of the worst, his legacy. Think about the influence he's had on modern American politics, and think about how his idea, like, the shift towards neoliberalism that he helped orchestrate. Think about how it has infiltrated society today. I mean, think about it. To this day, we're seeing income inequality spiral out of control thanks to the policies that, in their, in their birth, were championed by President Reagan. And we're also seeing president after president, whether Democrat or Republican, continue to expand our already giant military budget just to fight endless wars overseas. And it's not just his policies that did that. Although... It mostly is. It's because he was such a good communicator. And it's because he was a great orator. He was able to market these policies to an audience. And that's what made them popular. And that's why they are still incredibly prominent in society today. Despite the overwhelming evidence of the contrary that Reagan's policies are believed to be great by a lot of people. Not just by Republicans, like you're seeing even Democratic presidents adopting a lot of the policies that have laid out here. And as that happens, it's just a clearer and clear indictment of how much the Reagan legacy and the Reagan presidency has defiled American society. It has robbed the working class dry. It has ruined the lives of innocent black and brown people who 
are just using drugs and nothing more and showing no threat to other people. It is to completely blown up our military budget while people at back at home are struggling and places like Flint, Michigan don't have clean drinking water. But we don't have the money for that, but we have the money to increase our already gargantuan military. I, I'm not, I'm, nobody buys that. Some people do, but they're wrong. It It's upsetting. It really is. If he, if he were not loved, if he were not ranked so highly, then maybe, maybe it'd be a different story. But with how much praise he gets and with how celebrated he is today, even among a lot of Democrats, like it's just really, it needs to be said. Ronald Reagan was a horrendous president. He changed America for the worse. And we are still living with the effects today. And millions of people have been hurt by his policies. And the damage he's done is almost irreparable. And there needs to be some reconciliation there. There needs to be some accountability. And the record needs to be set. Because as we see him still popular in America, we need to recognize that he caused a lot of damage and we need to move beyond this era of corporatism and neoliberalism if we ever want to get back on the right track. And that starts with stop holding up people like Reagan when the effects of their actions are hiding in plain sight. Well, that was a little that was a little heavy, I know, but I've been wanting to make a video like this for a while. Uh, I figured now is the right time, especially with that ranking list. Um, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, you know, do the usual like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with your friend who loves Ronald Reagan. Pop their bubble. <laughs> Pop. Tell them to wake up and smell the coffee. Send this video to them. Maybe. <sighs> I don't know. Just do it. Whatever. Uh, and uh, click over here to check out some more of my videos. Um, and also, go subscribe to my boy Niall Elkham. I'm going to be on his podcast, Dirty Left Feet, this Sunday, July 11th. So, go check that out. Uh, at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And, yeah. That's it. Thank you all for watching. Peace.